Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is in your neck of the woods. Hi, everybody. This is Teaching Trek here to celebrate Arc Fall with you, and uh, and trying to do multiple different things at the same time. And it's and it's gonna be. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Nailing I mean, it. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Already, I have started a stream that was not on the link that I published. How, <laughs> how does that even happen? Don't know how that happens. I know, I sent everybody to the wrong stream, doing it live. What could go wrong, Damoff? No clue. Oh. Uh, welcome in, everybody. Appreciate you guys. Uh, oh yeah, nothing could go wrong, Jared. Nothing. Oh, Steven Zaren, thank you for the for the sticker, the hype chat. I don't even know what I don't know what these things are on YouTube. We haven't streamed in YouTube in a year. We haven't streamed <laughs> in YouTube in a, in a year. It's been a long while, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this stuff is. All right, morning, everybody. Welcome to Arcfall. Welcome to Arcfall, everybody. Appreciate you guys all being here. My name is Ultimate DJs, and this is Teaching Trek, the uh, the Arcfall video. And yes, you guys get the cat. I wasn't going to do the cat, but then you guys asked for the cat. You got the cat. All right. Uh, there you go. You got the cat. Isn't everybody excited? Uh, good morning, everybody. We are going to try to get through a script. All right. Uh, for those of you watching the YouTube short at the moment, I am going to try to get this through so you don't have to watch the entire stream. All right. Because I'm a nice kitty. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you things. All right. I'm going to pull up things to show you things. And we're going to try to bang this through real quick. Griffin, good morning to you. Welcome into the show. Thank uh, you. Brrr. All right. Here's what, uh, here's what I've got. And I am recording right now at the same time as I'm live streaming. I don't know how this is actually going to go. But what I plan on doing is uploading this very quick and dirty Arcfall video. It's going to be not produced. It's going to look like garbage. But it's, it's what we're going to actually try to do to keep some people from having to watch the entire live stream. All right. So this will so basically, basically like all our other content. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this will basically serve as our arc fall video if you will ladies and gentlemen welcome in to symbiosis all right i'm gonna load i'm gonna look oh no i forgot to download all of my assets <laughs> <laughs> i forgot to download all the assets so here's what i'm gonna do real quick i'm gonna i'm gonna come over here and i'm just gonna click click keep on this device and it's gonna start downloading some stuff ladies and gentlemen welcome to symbiosis part one all right uh this is the artwork that you guys have seen in and around the game uh in beck's post in the leak video uh it is all about uh a trill character we're going to talk uh more about that coming up in a little bit but first uh i'm going to just go down the list all right i'm just going to go down everything and tell you what's going on uh we have a new fleet commander which you guys already knew ladies and gentlemen fleet commander Lorca is making his way into the game uh and he is bringing with him a brand new ability all right uh this is a fleet commander active ability high impact long cooldown short duration it'll be a fleet-wide buff so anything that you uh that you apply that you uh, have in and that you have researched and unlocked with skill points the active ability will be a massive damage boost we're talking allegedly several thousands of percent um that is going to be active for a very short period of time so high burst damage output this is the first fleet commander of its kind to have an active ability and it will use Lorca skill points in order to activate this uh fleet commander must be in the first chair this will provide choice with the active abilities as more fleet commanders are released with abilities in the future cooldowns for switching fleet commanders have now been reduced to one hour instead of six uh but you'll need to shuffle your fleet commanders around a little bit because he must be in the first chair 
if you want his ability to work. My cat, on the other hand, will not work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you want uh, you want him to be in the first chair. And FYI, I'm sorry just because of the way that I'm doing this stream real quick. I can't see the chat at the moment. We'll come back for chatters here in just a second, okay? Uh, building requirements have been lowered for the introduction of skills. Uh, one of the big things that we have seen in the past is the push or the drive to get all the way to Command Center 40 or Command Center 50 or Command Center 55 to get some of these skills unlocked. Uh, they have gone through and restructured these skills for Fleet Commander Lorca. Uh, building requirements for unlocking the skills have been significantly lowered. However, to max those skills uh, will continue to require higher levels. This was done in an attempt to give everybody a little bit more feeling of value from the fleet commander. So it's going to give more options for you to unlock and start to experience those skills early on. Lorca is said to be the best of all fleet commanders, the best of providing a new ground floor basis for future fleet commander deployments. He will consist of some of the best skills of all the other fleet commanders, including speed, efficiencies, and lots of different types of damage. There are no rare skill points with Lorca, which is actually super nice. Uh, no nice. rare skill points at all. Uh, even the active Lorca damage ability will consume Lorca skill points. They will have limited sourcing this month and will not currently be in the Titan refinery for the time being. Uh, we are expecting to see some type of Sloan-style sourcing for these skill points this month, but have been assured that there will be better and more regular free-to-play sourcing and engagement-based sourcing in coming months. He will, however, use the same credits and XP. So if you've been keeping up with your Borg solos, then getting him leveled and promoted will be no issue, and that will impact the active ability. So for those of you who have some of that stuff bag, uh, banked up, you will be able to probably get the most out of your active ability pretty quickly by using the Borg Solo stuff. There will also be a fifth Fleet Commander slot coming this month. Remember the four that you already have, which uh, requires one paid slot that some people got unlocked in the event store. And then the fourth one that comes at Syndicate 40, there will be a fifth one offered this month. No word yet on the availability of that. And do remember that the active ability will only work in the first slot, okay? Uh, it will not work in any other slot. If you put Fleet Commander Lorca in the third slot, his active ability will not work function there is a new building this month called the nova squadron all right uh nova squadron uh right here is an image of the building it's meant to be kind of narratively tied to the top gun academy of starfleet pilots at starfleet academy uh this new building will unlock essentially a mini research tree that is limited to status effects. Uh, for example, boosting isolated damage if the enemy has burning or hull breach, et cetera, et cetera. Upgrading the building will give you the currency to work on these nodes. These effects, Griffin, are global and will affect both PvP and PvE. This month, you will also see the launch of G6 Solo Armadas. Uh, why Solo Armadas? Yeah, that's a little bit weird, right? Uh, no, it's actually not because there's just not enough of you. All right. <laughs> not enough of you. So, uh, not group armadas, simple population, preventing the large congregation of G6 players in a single alliance and not having one person be able to run an armada when nobody else can join. These are going to be present in 61 plus space, including hazard space they will be structured like all solos run the uncommons redeem the credits for rare directives and then run those to redeem for epic directives they will take new directives so what you have in stock will not service the new g6 solo armadas the rewards will be consistent with the previous generations of armadas including faction credits material ship parts uh, for G5 and 6, Sigma resources, speedups, galactic acclaim, rare hazard particles. Uh, uh, by the way, yes, I said rare hazard particles, which will be used in an extension to the hazards research tree. Two officers come this month. Uh, they are non-canon officers. These are, this is a completely made up arc and a completely made up story. Uh, one epic and one rare this month. The first epic 
Uh, I'm going to try to try to get this name right. <clears throat> the Josh Tora. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, got it. Whose captain's maneuver is loot gain for any loot. Uh, she is uh, Enterprise E Picard. She is 5 of 11 uh, in that a little bit of synergy can get her up above 100%. Her officer ability increases weapon shots for two rounds against Armadas and Chimeras. Um, to Tolly is the rare officer this month. This is Tolly, and uh, I appreciate the fact that last month Beck got put into the game. This month, I got put into the game. Look how dashing. Uh, <laughs> Tolly is the rare officer who is a below-deck officer, I believe. Uh, no captain's maneuver, but officer ability. His officer ability lowers Armada and Chimera mitigation stats by a percentage of defense. I could see that probably being important to some lower-level players, but his below-deck ability, kind of in Alexander Dane uh, styling right there will increase warp speed by a gargantuan amount. Um, can you imagine, Griffin, a warp speed increase of 1,500% that will come when you max out Tolly here? So uh, helping to speed things up all throughout the galaxy. New artifacts will present this month. We've got eight new artifacts. Uh, they are temporal in nature. I'm trying to see if I have any of the icons. I don't know that I do. Yep, doesn't look like I do. Uh, there are eight new temporal artifacts. These are going to require the same currency as the other temporal artifacts. There are two epics that increase isolytic damage and increase mats and re uh, resource cost efficiency for G4 through G6. There are three rares that will increase apex barrier when your enemy has a state. There's one for each of the three primary states. And then there are three uncommons, which will increase max cargo, construction speed, and one for specific loops resource, uh, like specific loops research resources. So like, you know, helping efficiency for, you know, other loops. Uh, there is a new... Three for Defiant, Mantis, Monophene, Titan, and Voyager. Thank you! That obviously came from the patch notes that I haven't read yet. Uh, as a <laughs> There is also a new Forbidden Tech this month, Epic in design, that has been designed, Griffin, allegedly to be the Ooh. best yet. It's called the Quantum Slipstream Drive. This uh, does need to be equipped on a ship, just like any of the other Forbidden Technologies. But as a note, Scopely thought it was important for players to know that all four of these abilities have been sourced from the community. Uh, through VIP channels and the Player Advisory Council, this one is entirely player-built. So we would like to see uh, how it goes and how you guys react to the abilities that were chosen. Uh, the first one are going to be uh, is increased warp range. All right, which Griffin, I can see being pretty daggone valuable depending on how stout this becomes, but increasing your warp range for any ship that it is equipped on, which people have talked about wanting extra warp range. This is going to do it. Your next right one up to 15 percent, 15 percent. That is a massive number. That's 15 percent net, by the way, guys, increasing crit hit chance will be your second ability, decreasing opponents shield mitigation every round as a cumulative stack <laughs> will be the third one and the fourth one increasing shield health points for the ship these are global folks meaning they work in pvp and pve there is a new refit for the gorn eviscerator that will add buffs to your ships that cross through a rift this one is a little bit weird to me if you have the refit you have to cross through a rift with a normal ship. It doesn't have to be your rift. It could be an alliance mate rift. But as long as you cross through the rift and you own the refit, then you are going to do kind of like Fleet Commander Lorca. You're going to get a high impact, short duration buff that is automatically enabled and does not cost any juice. Uh, so if you've got the refit and then you take a ship through a rift, it's going to come out the other side with with these bonuses and, and you know, whatever. Uh, and that is going to come as a result of owning the Eviscerator refit. Finally, uh, just a couple of quick notes as we get ready to wrap up here, Griffin, because I don't know 
uh, how to actually get out of a YouTube live. Um, or I'm not going to leave the YouTube live, but I'm going to stop the recording because uh, this is your Arcfall video, and we did it live and on the fly, and I'm, I have no idea how it all went. So leave your comments down below uh, and be sure to subscribe to this completely unprofessional channel and uh, give us a thumbs up because you laughed so hard at how terribly it was produced. Uh, I appreciate all that. Uh, last bit of information, Alliance Tournaments are slated to return this month, Griffin, in week three. Alliance mm -hmm. Tournaments will return in week three if they are finished with their uh, their revamp, all right? There will be only one Battle Pass this month, only one Battle Pass this month, and uh, the Rare Officer is not guaranteed, uh, either free-to-play or $20. Uh, and I'm just kind of going through some of the questions that I know you guys were going to ask. Uh, let's see. There are only two weekends of auctions and uh, of auctions and a heroic SMS for the Epic. There is nothing planned, uh, or they're reserving, rather, week three for something else, potentially. Um, so, uh, yeah, you'll have weekends one and two for, uh, what was her name? Tazash. Tazash Tolra. All right, there you go. Tazash Tolra. There you go. That is Symbiosis Part 1. Griffin, I know that you and Matters have been uh, scouring the patch notes as I've been going on in an effort to try to get the most information out as quickly as possible in 60 seconds or less. Is there anything that we have missed from the patch notes? Um, yeah, the uh, Forbidden Tech is going to be awesome, but you covered it all. Uh, Jordy's visor is one of the uncommon artifacts, which I'm buying immediately, and... Great job, DJs. It's 4 a.m. You had your coffee, and you made a video live. I made a video live, and while I am uh, while I am getting ready to wrap up in the next few seconds, you are right. I did have my coffee, and I would like to thank uh, one of our latest stream sponsors this morning, Veterans of America Roastery. Duty, honor, and caffeine is their slogan. You can visit them online at Veterans of America Roastery. Dot com. They are providing my liquid sustenance this morning. And, uh, and <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God I had it because uh, I'm zombified. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your video. Welcome to Arcfall Symbiosis, September 2024. We'll be back uh, right after this with more questions and tonight on Twitch for a live demonstration of this month's content. Thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Ultimate DJs. This is Teaching Trek, and uh, we'll be back uh, right after this.